All right. So before I talk about anything about this week, I wanted to talk about another book. Um, so I put a little picture at the top of the Blackboard page this week. So you've already seen the name of the book. It's called Rest by Alex Sujung King Pan. Um, the subtitle is Why You Get More Done When You Work Less. And when I saw the subtitle, I wasn't that interested. It sounds like one of these productivity hacker type books, uh, which have their place, but you know they're not so like intellectually fulfilling. Um, but I was happily uh, surprised to find that this was a really, really wonderful book, and I realized that I have to recommend it to everybody. This is such an important book. If you're watching this video, it means you're a graduate student. It means you're part of this, you know, knowledge economy or information society or whatever. Um, it's so important. So. The whole point of the book is seeing uh, work and rest not as a dichotomy, right? Not as things that are against each other or that fight, uh, but things that are that actually nurture each other, things that are part of a bigger whole. Um, he talks about how rest and work are both necessary to become a whole person and to achieve great things, if that's what you're looking for in life. Um, so I just wanted to give a little overview of the book and talk about a couple of the main points from it. Uh, so he starts out by talking about the knowledge economy, which you may be familiar with, how, you know, despite the promises of machines to, you know, make people live lives of leisure, we're actually working more and more, more than ever before. You know, all these beautiful household appliances that are supposed to save us time actually make us spend more time working. And as a result, we're, you know, we're so busy being busy and we want to look busy and blah, 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 right? So one little quote is, today, we treat being stressed and overworked as a badge of honor, a sign of seriousness and commitment. But, he says, this is a recent phenomenon, and it inverts traditional ideas of how leaders and professionals should behave under pressure. For most of history, leaders were supposed to appear calm and unhurried. Success began with self-mastery and self-control. So, for most of the book, he goes through... Um, a lot of different, all these different stories about high achievers, whether they're creative people or artists, scientists, some designers even. Um, he starts out talking about the science of creativity. And one of the surprising things, maybe surprising, is that how good ideas actually come from not working on a problem directly. So it seems that the best way to come up with ideas is to think about it, immerse yourself in the literature, right? Do our kind of empathizing and research activities, and then go do something else, honestly. And so what does that something else look like? Well, it could be taking a nap, uh, or outright sleeping, could be going for a walk, or, you know, running, or whatever, right? Could be taking a sabbatical. And so he goes through all different examples that uh, high achievers have worked these things into their lives to great, great, great benefit. Um, and it's actually a hallmark of the best people. Here's another quote that I loved. He says, Indeed, world-class performers often are more likely to call themselves lazy than their less accomplished peers. This isn't just false modesty. Because they seek out forms of rest, that give their conscious minds a break and provide a mental and psychological boost, but leave their subconscious minds free to run through ideas, test and reject possibilities, and home in on a solution, their sense of how much time they work and how much time they have at their disposal differs from that of their less successful colleagues. This is why in Edison's study, uh, Edison studied uh, academics, the, the best you know, performing scientists and, and you know, what uh, led to their success. So this is why in Edison's study, less well-sighted or well-known scientists saw themselves as too time-pressed for hiking or surfing or playing the piano. They had too many commitments, too many obligations, too many demands on their time, and the sad belief, and this is where it gets really sad, the sad belief that if they just worked a little harder, they could get on top of things. So the message of the book is that, you know, it's basically all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And you can see my cat's tail here, so maybe he'll settle down and we can just enjoy him. Um, so, you know, we've heard this sort of truism that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, right? Well, it seems to be really the case. It makes Jack a dull boy and a low achiever and just very stressed out, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, it's a fantastic book. Um, Along with this, he talks about how rest doesn't just magically happen. It's not like you can just, you know, go home and turn on the TV and whatever, and um, you'll suddenly be resting in a productive way. No, it's something that we actually have to plan for and kind of structure and make sure that we're getting productive rest. So um, anyways, I am sure that all of you would get a lot out of the book if you read it. I mean, anybody who's living would get a lot out of this book. And so I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, it's fantastic. I can't sing its praises highly enough, so I will just stop now.